Welcome your first LEGO League Challenge Master of Ceremonies from First Canada, the amazing, the wonderful Karthik Hanna Gasabap Ate! Good morning everyone and welcome to the Ontario East Provincial Championship! That is right, we're celebrating all the accomplishments of our team from across the province here. Our top teams in so many areas, robot performance, core values, project overall, these are the best of the best and we're showcasing and celebrating their learning and accomplishments and everything they've done this season. And what an accomplishment it was just to even get here, just to even build a robot, just to even have your first meeting. We're so proud of all the teams who made things happen. So what's happening on today's show? Well, we got match footage with commentary, some innovation project presentations, a really fun Kahoot with some prizes, and of course, our Ontario East Remote Provincial Championship Award Ceremony. So, it's time to get started. But as Canadians, it is very important to rec recognize the land on which we are a part. As we gather for this meeting, physically dispersed and virtually constructed, let us take a moment to reflect upon the meaning of place, and in doing so, recognize the tra various traditional lands on which we celebrate today. We acknowledge the elders, past, present, and emerging of all the land on which we work and live and their ancestral spirits with gratitude and respect. We acknowledge that this land, we acknowledge this land out of respect for the indigenous nations who have cared for Turtle Island, also called North America, from before the arrival of settler peoples until today. Most importantly, we remember the history of these lands has been tainted by poor treatment and a lack of friendship with the First Nations who called them home. History is something we are all affected by as we are all treaty people in Canada. We all have a shared history to reflect upon and each of us is affected by this history in different ways. Our past defines our present, but if we move forward as friends and allies, it does not have to define our future. All right, everyone, to get us started, please welcome our first guest of the day, First Lego League Challenge Program Manager from First Robotics Canada, Annika Pint. We're back for the second season in a row uh, during which teams have competed remotely by submitting recorded robot matches and meeting virtually with panels of judges to perform their innovation project and robot design presentations over the course of last week. And what a week it was. Uh, maybe this experience was familiar to you because your team competed at last year's remote provincial championship event. Uh, maybe your team has competed at a provincial championship event in the past, but it was held in person and this is your first time competing remotely. And maybe your team uh, has never qualified to compete at a provincial championship. Uh, no matter what, I want to welcome and congratulate all of you because it is no small feat to qualify for this event. And it is uh, remarkable that you have been able to do so uh, under circumstances like those that uh, teams have faced that both this season and last. Uh, throughout the season, I've had the very good fortune to talk to and in some cases meet virtually with many of you. Uh, and I have to say that it has been truly inspiring for both me, uh, all of the experts, judges, and referees with whom you've interacted throughout the season, uh, and for the entire FIRST community to witness all of the ways in which you have uh, learned, problem solved, uh, collaborated, created, and communicated with one another to help get you to where you are today. I suspect that uh, memories of these experiences will last you a lifetime, 
and that the skills you have developed through participation in the First Leg Relief Challenge program uh, will serve you well in the future, no matter what educational or career pathways you choose to pursue. Uh, and I think they'll also equip you to uh, continue identifying and finding solutions to hopefully many other societal problems. As I mentioned earlier, many have uh, faced and overcome challenging circumstances, but despite these challenges, I suspect that there are there is also much for which to be grateful. Uh, so before we get started, I'd like you to take a moment to think of and share in the chat uh, an appreciation that you'd like to express uh, to either, uh, it could be to your coach for the ways in which they made this experience possible for you. It could be to your teammates for working hard and demonstrating the core values. It could be an expert that helped you learn something new. Maybe a sponsor helped to start your team or to keep it running this year. Maybe a judge or a referee made you feel good about your presentation. Or it could be for a parent uh, or guardian that encouraged you or simply made you a meal before or after practice. Uh, I can see from some that have come in so far, and please keep them coming, uh, that it has been a real team effort uh, for you to make it here today. And so uh, my appreciation uh, on behalf of First Canada, uh, I want to thank you for being part of this season, and I hope to see you uh, either at one of the other events for which you might qualify this season, or back next season for more fun and learning. Back to you, Karthik. Thank you, Annika. That was uh, great, great words, great advice for our teams, and a great thank you for everything that they've been doing. You know, this has been a fabulous season, but I think it's important to take a look at, you know, what this season is all about and the bigger picture. So let's take a look at our season launch video. Three, forty-four. Captains of the league. Assemble in five. Listen up. Every package delivered in this neighborhood takes on average forty-four seconds or more. Multiply by the number of deliveries made, which is a lot. The drivers get stuck in rush hour traffic daily. Extremely inefficient. But if we can build robots to receive the packages, then we can get the average delivery time down to less than seven seconds per house, saving an hour per driver per day. Who's up for the challenge? I love a challenge. Let's have some fun. Red Squad is testing the effect of packet size and weight on delivery time. You got it. Come on, Robert. Good stuff. And the blue swap? Just finished experiments on velocity. Perfect. How's the bot going? As scheduled, we just had the best failure yet. The team is making adjustments. And we will be ready for tomorrow. Excellent cooperation team. Guys, it's late. Do you think we're ready? We're definitely ready. Seven seconds! We did it! Yes! yes. I knew we were gonna do it. Now that we've completed our challenge, it's your turn. Your mission is to improve the transportation of products. In Cargo Connect, you will learn about how cargo is transported, sorted, and delivered to its destination. We have the power to build a path towards the future of transportation. And it starts here with you.
First is a nonprofit organization with a mission to get kids excited about science and technology. First and Lego Group partnered to create the first Lego League program all the way back in 1998. That's before all of you were born. That's kind of wild to think about. Uh, 200 teams participated that first year, and as of last year, there were over 320,000 students in nearly 100 countries. That's more than half the countries on the planet uh, uh, who part participated in this program. First Lego League Challenge teams prepared for this tournament by working together to design, build, program an autonomous robot to develop, and to develop an innovative solution to a real-world problem, all while demonstrating those super important first core values. For the uh, Cargo Connect season, teams found a way to look at transportation solutions and to see how it affects our world and it impacts people of all ages and abilities. In the robot game, teams can earn points in two and a half minute matches by completing missions related to this year's challenge. So I think folks, it's time to take a look at this year's robot missions. <laughs> This is the Cargo Connect competition field. There are 16 missions which can be done in any order. You do not have to complete all the missions, just try as many as you can in each two and a half minute robot match. Only the score from your best match will be counted. Your robot must start completely inside this launch area and you should program it to return to this home area. You can handle and modify your robot between runs while it's in the home area. Gracious professionalism is how we express our core values in First Lego League. The robot game is an important place to observe gracious professionalism, and the referees will evaluate this for each team at each robot match. Your robot and all its equipment must fit into one of the inspection areas. If it is small enough to fit into this small inspection area, you will score the bonus points. Mission one, innovation project model. In this mission, you will use the innovation project model you have made that represents the solution to your innovation project. If your innovation project model has any part touching the Cargo Connect circle, Mission two, unused capacity. Fill the container with its contents. While the hinged container is in home, a team member can fill it with the contents. If the container is closed and partly full of contents. If the container is closed and completely full of contents. Mission three, unload cargo plane. Unload the cargo plane and send the container on its journey. If the cargo door is lowered and rests completely down, touching its black frame, and the container is completely separate from the plane. Mission four, transportation journey. The airplane and truck must reach their destinations. If the airplane is completely past its blue end line on the mat. If the truck is completely past its blue end line on the mat. A bonus is scored when both tasks are completed. Mission five, switch engine. Switch your engine from diesel to electric. The engine is switched so that the yellow bar is resting all the way down to the south. Mission six, accident avoidance. Park safely without causing an accident. At the end of the match, if the robot is parked over the blue accident avoidance line and only the yellow panel is knocked down. But if the robot goes too far and the black frame is knocked down. Mission seven, unload cargo ship. Unload the container from the cargo ship if the lime green container is no longer touching the ship's deck. Move the lime green container so that it is completely east of the cargo ship's east deck. Wow. 
Mission 8, airdrop. Release the food package from the helicopter onto the other field. If the other team releases the food package onto your field, deliver it to the Cargo Connect Circle. If the food package is separated from your helicopter, if the food package that came from the other field's helicopter is completely in your Cargo Connect Circle, if both teams have separated their food packages from their field's helicopters, a bonus is scored. The maximum score possible is 40 points for each team. Mission nine, train tracks. Lower the section of the train track and get the train to its destination. If the train track is repaired so that it rests completely down to the west. If the train has reached its destination and is latched at the end of the tracks. Mission 10, sorting center. Sort the containers, leaving the light orange container in the sorting center. If the light orange container is the only container remaining completely in the blue sorting area box. Note, these containers may also be used in other missions. Mission 11, home delivery. Deliver the package to its destination on the doorstep. If the package has been delivered and is on the doorstep partly, or if it is on the doorstep completely. Mission 12, large delivery. Transport the turbine blade to the blue holder, avoiding the chicken statue. If the turbine blade is touching only the blue holder and the mat, or if it is touching just the blue holder. If the chicken statue is upright with its base partly in its circle, or if it is upright with its base completely in its circle. Mission 13, platooning trucks. Latch the platooning trucks together outside home and also latch them to the bridge. If both platooning trucks are latched together completely outside home. If a platooning truck is latched to the bridge, a bonus is scored when both tasks are completed. Mission 14, bridge. Lower the two bridge decks. If one bridge deck has been lowered and rests on the center support. If both bridge decks have been lowered and rest on the center support. Mission 15, load cargo. Load cargo containers onto different forms of transportation. A maximum of two containers can score per form of transportation. If there are any containers loaded onto the platooning trucks. If there are any containers loaded onto the train. if there are any containers loaded onto the west deck of the cargo ship. Mission 16, Cargo Connect. Deliver cargo containers to the circles. If there are any containers partly in any circle. If there are containers completely in any circle. If the blue, not hinged, container is completely in the blue circle. If the lime green container is completely in the green circle. If there are containers in any circle. Mission 17, precision tokens. The less you interrupt your robot outside home, the more points you will keep. If you interrupt your robot outside the home area, you will lose a precision token. Precision tokens left on the field will result in extra points. Remember that referees will be evaluating your gracious professionalism at each match. Remember to read the robot game rulebook and check for any updates during the season.
Good luck. So many cool missions in this year's game. So intricate, lots of point values, point levels. Uh, just can't wait to see these robots in these matches and what they're going to be doing. Uh, before we do that, uh, you know, it's important to recognize the sponsors who put help us put these events together. And there's one sponsor who's been supportive over the years. Let's take a look at this video from Hatch. When I was applying for co-ops, I was really looking for a place that would allow me to have the greatest amount of experience. And since Hatch is such a big company, I knew that I would be able to get involved with all the different groups that the company offers. What surprised me about working at Hatch um, was the amount of responsibility that you're given very quickly, like once you start. There's so many opportunities to learn, not just from specialists in the field, but also from something like lunch and learns, or even safety shares. So it's not something technical that I'm learning, but something that might help me in my everyday life. For me to be able to just walk into their office and ask them whatever I want, to schedule a meeting whenever I want, to be able to work directly with them on building things was, was, was an insanely good experience. As a student, I am as much valued as the other employees that are here. I enjoy working here because people are very friendly and this environment that they created has been more than absolute perfect. And now, let's hear from the traditional host of the Ontario East Provincial Championship, Durham College. I chose mechanical engineering technology because it is the most versatile program that you could possibly find. I chose this program because it has a lot of opportunities to branch to university. I would honestly say that I like the professors the most. The one-on-one -on -one time that you get with them and the care that you get from the actual teachers themselves. So I like the labs the best. I like how the equipment's up to date. I like working with my hands where it's a good opportunity that you don't really get in a lot of different programs. Thank you, Durham College. Now it's time to meet our judges. The judges evaluate teams in three areas, robot design, innovation project, and of course, core values. And they have the challenging task of determining award winners from the many amazing teams that compete at this event. Thank you to our judge advisor, Callum Chang, and to our judge assistant, Caitlin Walsh, and to all the judges for volunteering their time to make this event possible. Next, let's meet our referees who serve as the robot game officials and have a really tough task of scoring recorded instead of live matches this year. But you know, with their years of experience and the guidance of head referee Jeff Law, they did an amazing job and we are so grateful to them for volunteering their time to ensure that everyone had fun while staying within the rules of the game. You know, I, I touched on it earlier, but events like this just couldn't be possible without the support of local sponsors. So let's take a moment to recognize the sponsors for this first Lego League Challenge Ontario East Provincial Championship.
All right, folks, now it's the time, the moment you've been waiting for. So let's meet our teams. And to help us do that, please welcome our game announcers, the legendary, the fantastic Paul and Charles Offer. Woohoo! Hello, wow. Ontario. This is hey. going to be awesome, eh, Brother Paul? It's going to be fantastic, Charles. We got some great teams from all over the province. You want to tell people who they are? I would love to. Let's call some numbers and let's find out who they are and where they're from. Go ahead. All right. We are starting with Team 458. They're known as Box to the Future from Toronto. What about Team 1560? Our first team from Etobicoke, Mass Engineers. And we've got Team 1564. A second team from Etobicoke, also known as L-E-R-B-B, or LERB. Welcome to the tournament. Followed by Team 5831. They hail from North York, Control Z. And Team 11410. Also from North York, they are known as the Darcellas. Tell us about Team 12513. Team 513, they're known, they're from Stittsville, Ontario, and they're known as the T-Bots. And Team 23608. They are connecting all over, known as Team Bridge, and just down the street from Unionville. Ah, fantastic. Coming up is Team 27757. They definitely have a connection. They are Connect Tech from North York, Ontario. And who is Team 28871? Well, lightning strikes twice in this tournament from Scarborough, Ontario, the Lightning Cargo. Ooh, a fast team, Team 30939. They're faster than anything known as Warp Drive, and Richmond Hill is where they hail from. All right, we've got Team 34291. This team sticks it together because I'm known as the Circuit Breakers from North York, Ontario. Uh-oh, watch out for Team 37714. We have watch out for them because they're known as the Angry Birds. Look at that face on them, and they're from Oakville. The weather's getting shaky with Team 38463. And lots of spinning going on around from Hamilton, Ontario, the Tech NATOs. We've got Team 38727. Toronto is their home, and they're all about safety. They're known as the Safety Bodies. Uh-oh. We've got Team 44434. This team doesn't monkey around. From Kingston, Ontario, Machine Monkeys. I'm sure you've heard of Team 44851. I know they're a legend in their own minds, or also known as Lego Legends from Oakville, Ontario. Coming up is Team 5440. From my hometown, Markham, Ontario, and Thran. And what about Team 51093? Who says lightning doesn't strike twice? The lightning tech from, uh, uh, sorry, Oakville, Ontario. Woohoo! We've got five rookie teams in a provincial. The first one is Team 52356. I don't think they're a ghost, but they're known as the Phantom from Richmond Hill. We've got some felines, 52364. From Canada, Z Cats. What about Team 52646? They're known as HCCS4 from Addison, Ontario. Oh, can you find Team 52712? We can always find them, known as Team Pokemon from Winnipeg. What a great addition we have. And this team's making me hungry. It's Team 54660. Yeah, talk about breakfast. UTS baguettes, and they hail from Toronto, Ontario, and that rounds out all our teams at this wonderful tournament. So... We're going to have uh, congratulations. We're going to hand this back over to Karthik. He'll get some introductions happening, and we'll get this rolling. Karthik. Oh, baby, that's right. Congratulations to all the teams for competing, especially to our five rookies. This has been a long year, but, you know, you, you've hopped on your cargo ships, and you've jumped on your cargo planes, and you've made it here. So who's going to be able to keep truck of all the action to come because the teams have trained hard and are not afraid to deliver their best performances of the year. So let's move fast forward into today's showcase. And we're gonna do that with our first match. Chucky, you ready for our first match? I sure am. I'm getting ready for the land or the sea or the air. You decide how we're gonna transport things. Let's get going. Oh yeah, we're gonna hop on that cargo ship and we're gonna say hello. Hey, everyone, remember, we're gonna be playing two matches at the same time. So one on the left side of the screen, one on the right side of the screen. They're not playing head to head or anything like that. 
there, Jeff Stunt. He's going to want to show you more action at once. I'm going to be having two at the same time. All teams are going to be ranked on their highest score of uh, three runs that they've taken. And we're just showing one of the runs, their best run, uh, presumably. So let's meet the team. Starting first on our left side, team 38463, the Technadoes. <laughs> And on the right side, Team 52356. You won't find him at the opera. It's Team Phantom. Oh, hello, cute doggy, Mooney. All right, let's get this match started. First match of the day in three, two, one. Lego. Lego, it is. The Technators on the left and the Phantom on the right. And check out that robot over there. The Technators have that robot twirling around. And in possession, they've got the large turbo blade. And notice the back portion of the cargo uh, has been opened and out dropped a bin there. Our other friends over here, Phantom still retooling and, and uh, oh, there goes the robot, out it comes. Oh, check out their Technoidos up that line and they are knocking down portions of the bridge. To the other side, the gentlemen are working in tandem there. Notice the gracious professionalism for each of them. Technoidos do a back into that area over here, a close along. And they're uh, moving out of there. They're doing a great job maneuvering with that large piece of apparatus. Here comes the robot for Phantom. Up they go, following that black line. And they do a starter step. They hit the railway tr uh, trestle and they turn around. Let's see where they're going to go. Back to the other side, maneuvering around the train. Uh, Tech Notice have dropped uh, the tracks very peacefully, as well as they are delivering some crates on top of the train. To the other side, nice job over there. They are pushing forward. Down goes the airdrop, and the packets drop, and they pick up the robot, and they head back to home base. We're getting approximately one minute to time. Lots of time left. Lots of time and action for these robots to make their maneuver. We have a, a device on the front of the Tech Notice lifting up that blade as they maneuver, the stutter step turning around, going backwards, and they head off to the direction of the airdrop. Let's see if something can drop if, if it hits the floor. Okay, there is working together. There is retooling. There is making sure that they can deliver as many pieces as they can to that distinct destination. Oh, precision as the Technados drop that large blade onto that platform and they back it away from there. Okay, looks like they've got the bridge down and they've also made another nice deposit to the other side. Oh, job well done on Phantom. Looks like we've got uh, one knocking on their doorstep and they're getting a new front on that. Let's see if they can do that. They've got lots of time left within the nine seconds of this tournament. Okay, another crate delivered. Phantom a teammate is celebrating, as well as on the other side. We're getting close to the end of that. We're gonna park that vehicle. We're gonna have an accident avoidance and parking safely. And time has just expired, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give it up for our first match. Round one, match one, Karthik. Let's hear a score, please. Well, you know, we're kicking things off with a bang because those were some great matches. A lot of missions achieved, so I think these scores are going to be pretty high. So, starting off on the left side, Team 38463. The Technados, 495 points. Spreading the points all over the place. And on the right side, here comes the Opera Team 52356. Phantom 520. Wow, what a way to start the day. Paul, you think we can do that again? Oh, yeah, Carthy. Starting like that, it can only get better. We're going to see some great matches. I'm ready for round number two. Well, in round number two, on the left side, we got Team 1560, the Masked Engineers. And on the right side, Team 5440, and Theran. So, let's get this match started in three, two, one, Lego. <laughs> There's the horn, and there goes the robots, and they are both quick out from home base, and there's Entheran heading over. It looks like they want to make a delivery, and they have made a smooth delivery right on the doorstep. Meanwhile, the masked engineers looks like they were heading over, and they unloaded the cargo plane. Both robots now back into home base, just retooling the robots, getting set, and heading out for some more missions. These teams are just precision machines, and the... Uh, 
The technicians are working really hard to make the robots move. There's the mask engineers, nice cargo delivery right in the middle of the circle. And Theran decides to come this far in. They've both delivered uh, two cargoes, a yellow, a yellow and an orange, both into the cargo connect circle, back into base, moving. Now these robots have got light sensors, they've got touch sensors to find out where they are. And there we go, and Theran making a turn. Oh, nice delivery there, and looks like they're heading over. And oh, they have now taken care of switching the engine. Meanwhile, the masked engineers are lowering the bridges of the deck. There's one, there's two, and now they're going for more. They're following that black line, wiggling over to the helicopter. What's gonna happen there? They've interacted with the helicopter, and it looks like they're gonna get some uh, points for that. Now, lining themselves up on the side of the wall, they're heading over. Oh, look at that. They're gonna take care of the track. Track is lowered, well done. And Duran working hard on the other side of the field. They're lining themselves up and getting set. We've got less than a minute left in this match. 50 seconds and off they go. Look at, they've got a big boatload of cargo over there. And well, deck down. Nice job, heading over again. Will they get the second one? Nope, they pass it by. They might be coming back for it. A little bit of a nudge there with the uh, helicopter. And, oh, nice. They've got a bin in the circle. We've got less than 38 seconds. Mass engineers, they look like they're parking and giving a little bit of a nudge for safety. And, oh, and Theran has lowered the second deck of that bridge. And with just 17 seconds, look at them backing into their spot ever so slowly for that final park. And it's hard to tell, but I I think they might have done that completely safely with seven seconds as the clock winds down. Both fantastic robots parked for perfection. Karthik, give us some scores. Okay, we got some scores here on the left side. Team 1560, the masked engineers. 315 points. And team 50, 440, and they're in. 320. Great job by both these teams. Charles, I think it's time for another match, right? I'm going to agree with you. I think these teams have been waiting with lots of anticipation. All right, well, the anticipation is going to end right now because we're going to bring out our two teams, starting with the left side. Team 38727, the safety body. And on the right side, we got Team 52712, Team Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. All right, let's get this started in three, two, one, Lego. All right, let's see if these teams can deliver in two minutes and 30 sec seconds. A lot of action definitely happening. Both robots are out on the field. Team Pokemon heading down the center of that, and they do a twirl around. And our other friends, Ding Dong, and we have a nice deliver over there for home on the doorstep. This robot is moving forward to safety bodies, and they are in possession at that sorting center. To the other side over here, back to home base, getting a new retooling on the robot, seeing what's going to work best. Oh, notice the train and safety bodies have made a uh, great job. Down went the track and also the train went down the track. Boop, boop, boop. All right. The engineer is definitely in control of that. To our other side. Oh, check that out. The safety switch has been uh, maneuvered and we are moving from diesel to electric. We got a nice shove off on the other side and one of the crates has pushed to the other side. Both teams now are in home base and it looks like they're going to do some re-jigging and reassembling their robots to make it uh, fit for the next mission that they plan to take on. Lots of time, lots of opportunity. Notice how they work, push the right button and off it goes. Team Pokemon leaving that area and off they go down to the middle and they are headed east towards the train tracks. They do a quick turn around and just in front of the sorting station. Nice job. Down goes the railway tracks. It is fixed and down goes the train itself and moving to the other side. The safety bodies head over to our other friends and it looks like they've hit that switch engine. We are now gone electric. There goes uh, down for its destination, the transportation journey for the airplane. And they're maneuvering backwards and forwards it goes back over to home base and launch area. Out come Team Pokemon. What a delivery. Look at them stacked up high right in that uh, that's, uh, Cargo Connect area. Back it goes and they are scoring maximum points here. We're getting close to about 30 seconds. 
What a delivery. Look at the size of that object. The turbine blade down to the side for safety bodies, and they do a nice job just sliding that in effortless. And back goes the robot, and we're back again. Home base. Okay, Team Pokemon coming back. And they are, oh, I had a little starter step over there right in front of the parking lot. Looks like one of the team members are jumping up and down. Time is fleeting. Can they get this robot out in the last nine seconds? And it looks like we are over. And since we're over, it's your beginning there, Karthik. Tell us what's going on, please, and thank you. A score. Well, we got some scores here. On the left side, the safety bodies, you know, keeping everyone safe. Team 38, 727. 395 points. The scores have been really high today. A lot of action happening on the mat. And for Team 52712, Team Pokemon, did they catch them all? What did they catch right there? Hey, they caught 395 points. Great job by both teams. Now it's time for match number four. Paul, four matches in. You ready for this? I am so ready to see what's going to happen, Carly. What teams are we seeing next? Well, on the left side, we're seeing Team 54, 660, the UTS Baguettes. Oh, Baguette is, like, great for the morning. You know? That's kind of what you want to see right here. And on the right Tasty. side, Team 50. I know, I can use some, a little bit of butter. Oh, that'll be good. And on the right side, Team 5654, L-E-E-R-B, Lerb, or Lerb, L-R-B, L-E-R-B-B, gotcha. All right, let's get this match started. <laughs> Go chickens go, folks, in three, two, one, Lego. All right, go robots go. And look at that, the uh, empty container is headed, uh, Lerb, Lerb, L-E-R-B, has uh, sent it in. Meanwhile, the baguettes are on their side of the field. They're moving, they're oh, sneaking over there, and it looks like they are taking care of switching the engine, and they are back into home base. Both teams adding some attachments, filling their cargo containers, and then getting set to head out to gain some more points as quickly as they can. All the teams have a strategy that's working. The baguettes, there you go, just delivering some cargo right beside the chicken there. The chicken is left standing. And now, oh, there goes the truck. Nicely linked. That is just a straight move. Now they're taking a little bit of a turn and sliding over, taking care. It looks like they are trying to take care of deliver the, the airplane. Meanwhile, L-E-R-B, nice sliding along, following the black line. And, oh, there goes the truck. Yes, it is. Looks like it's connected. Let's see. The first deck of the bridge is down, sliding, make a nice turn. And they've got their innovation project in the Cargo Connect Circle and lowered the second half of the bridge. But that's not enough for them. They want more, so they're heading over to this end of the field right underneath us. And there's a little bit of a connect there. Oh, it looks like they interacted with the helicopter. The baguettes aren't taking time for breakfast. They're sliding across, and look at that. They're just nice precision moving. Truck is in place. There goes the deck of the bridge, and it looks like they've got the second one down. Meanwhile, L-E-R-B have taken some cargo and put it in the circle on their side. Both teams, with just 49 seconds, are in their home bases. They might have time for two, possibly one more mission can maybe there'll be combined missions what can they do folks we're on the edge of our seats they're moving fast look at those hands fly as they get the tools on their robot so that they can head out and see what they can do all right 30 seconds left on the clock and here we go watch the robots go l-e-e-r-b following that black line they make a turn right over to this side for 20 seconds. Oh, they're going to hit the crane. Oh, nicely done. Lifted up the cargo. The baguettes do the same thing. Now with 12 seconds left, are they going to try and park their robots? Look at L-E-R-B. Oh, so gentle over the line. And it's nicely done with three, two, one. Everything is parked and we are happy. Karthik, those teams were fantastic. Give me some scores, please. Oh, we got some scores because it looks like the baguettes got the bread. All right, team 54660, the baguettes score was 340 points. And for team 1564, 345. Great job by both teams. Ta-da. And now, Charles, are you ready for another match? I am ready to convey my enthusiasm for this robot journey. 
All right, and on this robot journey of Cargo Connect, we've got one, only one team in this match. We've got an odd number of teams, so parody argument says we've got to have a singleton, and our singleton over here will be Team 52646 HCCS4. All right, so let's, let's get this started in three, two, one, Lego. Goes that robot out at home base and moving down to that side. How cute and short that is, and they are able to pick that up. Side swipes near the unused capacity, and the robot is back. And let's see what it's going to do again. Oh, congratulations on that. Check that out. Persistence, and they are able to get unused capacity. Looks like one of their technicians is filling it up, and the other one is maintaining the robot out. Okay, down goes the robot and is headed east. And there, let's see where it's gonna go. It looks like it had a sidearm and they're gonna realign it. Let's see where they're gonna go. Lots of time. These guys are patient. Our, our technicians are patient. They're gonna line that up again. Notice that black thing. Side, uh, down goes one panel of the bridge. It passes it and it comes back east. Bingo. They are happy about that job. Mission control done on that bridge. All right, a new part has been added to the robot, and they made it a little bit taller. And it oh, looks like an upside down skis. Let's see what they are going to do on it. Out comes the robot, goes forward, twirls around, and it passes the lovely chicken down to the side. And ooh, I think we're not gonna we're gonna hear the ding dong bell in a minute. Let's see if they can drop. Yes! Hands go up in the air. They made a delivery. Ding dong on your doorstep. And the robot is uh, goes in reverse and back to home base. All right. Precision. Taking things off. They are going to right now reassemble, rigging up something for our next mission. We are under one minute left. Lots of exciting things can happen. They're taking the time, lining it up. Let's see where it's going to go. And off goes the robot following one of the black lines. Moving forward, a little extension of the black arm there. And we have gone from diesel to electric, and they are very successful. We are wanting to take care of our environment, and they're doing a great job of that for our future. Okay, we are under 30 seconds. Once again, the robot is coming out, and down it goes to the hull, unloading cargo from the back portion of that plane, and they take that out. Notice this contraption, what's going on? It's almost like a big, uh, driving thing in the front and they are stacking up some of the crates in front of that time is fleeting they're working together they're counting themselves down it moves forward out it goes and it stacks the stack falls over time is expired but the cargo connection was made and we are at the end of this match what a great solo match okay we're going to pass it over to uh, karthik who's going to tell us a score and the score for Team 52 646 HCC S4 is 235 points. Nicely done. Paul, I think it's time for match number six. What do you think? I think it's time for match number six to see, see two more great teams, Karthik. Who are they? Well, on the left side, we got Team 30, 939, the Warp Drone. And on the right side, Team 11410, Darcellus. So let's get things started in three, two, one, Lego. And they're off and running. Oh, look at the size of the warp drone. They have this huge bot. They're carrying the turbine blade and a whole lot of other things. They've given the chicken a little bit of a shove. Meanwhile, the Darcellus are at the other end of the field. They've already lowered the decks of the bridge and they've connected the two trucks. These teams are rocking. They're moving really fast. Darcellus at the far end looks like they're trying to lower. Nope. That, possibly nope they're doing some sorting they're doing some great sorting over there meanwhile warp drone has uh, been busy over on their side of the field they put the chicken back in place and now they're retooling the robot getting some attachments on and set to go Garcellus is still working hard they have lowered the bridge uh, uh, the train tracks and they pushed the train over neat now since they're at that end they figure they may as well just give the crane a bit of a shove off the boat and now oh look at that they've taken the truck put it past its spot and now they're bringing the cargo the empty cargo bin into home base so they can fill it up technicians are going to be working hard there let's look at warp drone they're over here they've got the train tracks lowered look at that arm on the front oh nice job picking that up that's really cool switching turning 
and lowering it, the blue one, into the blue circle. They give the helicopter lever a little bit of a nudge, and there goes the train, delivering the cargo to its destination. Well done. All right, Darcellus has, looks like they've uh, lowered the, uh, the door for the uh, cargo plane. We've got less than a minute to go, but these teams are really rocking. They're rattling off these missions like this so easy. They're making it look easy, but these teams, I tell you, these technicians have been working hard for so many months, and this is the result of all of their hard work and their cooperation and their energy. Okay, Darcellus heads out again. It looks like they've got a boatload of cargo, and they want to try and deliver it over to the Cargo Connect Circle. Warp Zone, Warp, warp Drone, sorry, does the same thing. Give it a little bit of a bump. And there we go, the cargo plane is empty. Okay, Darcella sliding in for parking. Uh, well, no, they're delivering right onto the deck of that boat and it is perfect. And then, oh, just a slide over right in place. Both teams now doing some parking. Warp Drone is celebrating because both teams are parked safely and they've got some great points racked up at the end of this mission. Karthik, I cannot wait to see the scores for these two teams. What are they? Hey, well, you know what I love? I love seeing Warp Drone celebrate right there. They're like, yo, we did this. We had a there great we match. We're pumped. And like that, it's all happening. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Do a little dance, you know? All right. Yeah. The score for Warp Drone, Team 30, 939. Whoa. 615 points. No wonder oh they're celebrating. Yes. Woo. Woo. And for Darcellus, Team 11, 410. <gasps> 600. Whoa. Both teams over 600 points here, and we're only at the halfway point of the competition. Charles, what do you think of all this action? That was totally awesome. I love the view. I'm glad that I had Rick side in order to see this. I mean, they yeah, are exactly. here to deliver. That's what I know. Oh, they're here to deliver, and they delivered on-time delivery, folks. And we got another match coming. So in match number seven, on the left side, we got team 37-714, the Angry Birds. Ka -ka, ka -ka. And on the right side, team 28-871, the Lightning Cargo. All right, let's get this thing started with a boom in three, two, one, Lego. Lego it is. We've got the Angry Birds, and they have made their mark, and off they go, and they are easily connect unused capacity. And our other friends, Lightning Cargo, make a lightning leap all the way down field, and bingo, they are uh, pushing them forward past the chicken, and back they go to their uh, home base area, and they were able to pick that up to the other side we've got a switch and uh, possibly uh that definitely that over there with the un unloaded cargo from the re uh, rear of the airplane okay down comes another spot and they smack that down and there's no hesitancy of action our other friends over there working together and definitely seeing reassembling looking at what's going on in the robot deciding what missions they're going to do next and which button to press okay angry birds should be known as the focus birds because they place the robot down and let's see where it's going to my other side down goes that cargo plane again lightning cargo making things happen and there is cargo all over back to the uh, main home base area nice job down to that one side one panel of the bridge is down and a they move forward, and it looks like a panel of the train track. Great maintenance on this field. Angry Birds definitely make things happen, as well as on our other side of the field. Notice the train. It, it too, is down, uh, and uh, they are able to fix that. And right now, Lightning Cargo, the robot is stationary. Still lots of time to happen on this wonderful event. Angry Birds, where are they going to go? Let's cheer them on. You can go by land, you can go by sea, you can go by air, you can deliver it a number of ways. And it does look a, a mid waddle for the Angry Birds as they follow that black line with the light sensor. Lightning Cargo waiting patiently. What have they got up their sleeve? Mm, they can deliver at any time, but we'll cheer them on in a moment. Down to the other side. They're pushing, down goes the train, and the train makes their cargo delivery. And still, we're about 25 seconds out, and the teams are stationary at this time. They're wandering around. Nice job. 
now remember we are here to deliver have uh, our robots reached their destinations whether by land whether by sea whether by air did they do it as quickly as possible i think they did and in a couple of minutes sorry in a couple of moments we are going to get a score to see what an awesome job that they did okay awesome is awesome and i'm gonna tr train this track over to you karthik Oh, well, the train's coming down the tracks, and I'm ready for it because we got our scores on the left side. Team 37714, the Angry Birds, 195. And Team 28871, Lightning Cargo, 235. Wow, just keeps on coming. And we're come moving into match number eight. Paul, match number eight, you ready for this? Eight is great, Karthik. Eight is great. Eight is certainly great, and in match eight, let's take the bait and go on a date with our team 52364, the Zedcats. And on the right side, we got team 27757, Connect Tech. Oh, that's a nice logo. That is slick. The black and gold right there. That's OVO style, baby. All right, let's get this match started in three, two, one, Lego. They've got a great logo but the even better looking robot all right both teams are ready and moving uh, zed cats are over at the other side looks like they want to make a home delivery let's see if it happens oh just so gentle on the doorstep and that happens meanwhile connect tech has been out and they're back home already man oh man these teams are moving fast there's the zed cats over at the far end of the field and it looks they're backing in give the oh yeah nice job with the helicopter a little bit of a touch there and now it looks like they're going to oh sneak around and meanwhile connect tech slowly carefully moving over it looks like they want to do some sorting are they going to do some yes it looks like they're picking some up they've got one oh and at the same time they're trying to they're lowering the uh, train tracks both teams are multitasking all right the uh empty bin for the zed cats is uh, is in the home base and the connect tech far end and let's see that train move, woo, 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 all the way down to the end of the tracks into the station. Robots are now making their way. Oh, nope. Oh, look at that. The crane on the boat has been slid, and now they take, choose to use a strategy of picking the robot and bringing it back to home base. Me meanwhile, the Zedcats have connected two of the trucks and brought them to the spot they need to go. Using the light sensors, you can see them shining those lights, finding their spots, and let's see if they can switch the engine. Yes, it is over. And a little bit of a turn, and now what are they going to do with that airplane? They picked it up and oh, turned it around and put it down. All right, less than 45 seconds on the clock. Connect Tech is getting set to head out with another mission. What are they gonna do? Slowly and carefully sliding between the bridge and the chicken. Off they go at the far end and a bit of a turn. Oh, right, to making a delivery into the Cargo Connect Circle. Here comes Zedcats. We've got less than 20 seconds left. Will they be able to lower the second deck of the bridge? We're not sure, but looks like they're making a delivery into the Cargo Connect. And there it is. The bridge is now complete with seven seconds left. Zedcats parking. Did they get it? It looks like it is so. Yeah, they're throwing a dance. I can see their shadows. Karslik, both teams worth dancing for. Let's see some scores. Oh, yeah, the dancing shadows, the Zed Cash. Well, let's see what they're dancing for. How many points did they put up? Team 52364 from the left side of your screen. 340 points. Lots of scores right in that range today. And on the right side, Team 27757, Connect Tech. 370 bing bang boom another great match all right charles match number nine ready for this this is gonna be exciting here let's get it out of the cargo hold and put it on the field that's right it's time to dine at nine all right on the left side we got oh look out folks team 5831 control z from Bayview Glen. And on the right side, team 12, 5, 13, the T-Box. All right, we're gonna get this one started. I got a feeling it's a good one. Starting in three, two, one, Lego. Awesome, they're all great. Look at the size of it. Look at those 
It's that robot with that extension coming down for the Control Z, and they drop that over there. Both teams have larger extensions, but Control Z was even longer. And did you see what they did? They were able to maneuver some packages along the way. All right, T Bot sliding that side, and they push forward on the platooning trucks, and they are close to that bridge area. And then they back over towards the airplane. Let's see, we're the other side over here. Control Z slowly making their mark. They're coming out, and down goes the, uh, they unload the back portion of the airplane with the cargo. And they are also very successful in switching the engine. And our other friends on the other side pushing forward, and just slightly off goes that uh, truck, reaches its destination. Then they push that back. All right, they do a twirl around and one, two portions of that bridge are down and the truck is closed. They've got some hands up in the air. It's also, again, notice the tracks, maintenance done, and let's see what they can do with that. Uh, the train, it also goes down. All right, Control Z coming out and there goes that robot to the other side. They're also celebrating, T-Bot celebrating at every moment. Look at all those attachments for Control Z as they are moving back in arrears and down goes the their truck it reaches its destination and they are celebrating and clapping okay forward motion slowly but surely notice oh the crane and the cargo are off that platform and they are happy about what it is one minute left lots of time the platooning trucks are uh, attached over here on the t-bot uh, side of the table and notice the technicians dressed in black doing what they need to do getting the right part on for the right mission okay robot comes out again for controls Instead, and down that side slowly but surely and they're able to link up the truck as well as one portion of the uh, bridges down what a delivery into cargo connects is that the innovation project wow we're gonna have to find that out towards the end and see if they do score that the train for the other uh, control z is uh the tracks are down there goes the train down the tracks and they're pushing forward the T-Bots have parked. They've done a great job of parking and notice. They've done a safety job at, at the same time. Okay, the train is down uh, for Control Z and they're down to that far side. They're also celebrating. Let's park this baby, they're saying. And in the dying seconds, off goes that panel. Hands are clapping. I heard the buzzer. Time has expired. And this one is in the history books now. Okay, Karthik, we're going to zoom it over to you and you're going to give us a score, please. Yeah, speaking of Zoom, do you see how the Control Z, they had like a Zoom call going, I guess, so others could watch what was happening there, or at least there was a big screen. I don't know. I don't want to assume what was going on, but it looked pretty cool to me. All right, the score for Team 5831 was uh, 470 points. And for the T-Bots, 12, 5, 13, 450. All right, we've got three matches left, three more matches of action here today. Paul, you ready for our third last match? The anti I am ready. match? Oh, yeah, I'm ready to unload some more excitement here. All right, let's do this. On the left side, we got Team 44851 Lego Legends. And on the right side, Team 458 hopping in their DeLorean and going box to the future. Marty McFly is excited for this one. All right, let's hop on our skateboards, hitch to the back of a truck, and start this match in three, two, one, Lego. Where we're going, we don't need roads because we got robots. Let's see what they do. The Legends and Box to the Future both heading out. All right, we've got some uh, cargo into base so they can, the technicians can fill it up. We're taking care of lowering the cargo bay door on the large plane. And look at that, Box to the Future, nice slowly moved, uh, connecting a truck. And meanwhile, the technicians are doing some work in the base. There goes one deck of the bridge and slowly forward. Second second deck, uh, doesn't want to go down just yet, but it looks like they, oh yes it did. And they may, they're they making a delivery in the Cargo Connect Circle. The legends, out they come. Slowly but carefully will they be following that black line using the right sensor and bringing the truck along for the ride. There goes one deck of the bridge and it looks like they're gonna slide over and there goes another and they also make a delivery to the Cargo Connect Circle. Walks to the future slowly and here oh ding dong delivery made they pick up their robot and bring it back they touch point there but that's okay it's part of the strategy what happened to the chicken and box to the future i got slid out of the way all right following the line 
both teams back in the base, but not for very long. Here it comes. Oh, they're delivering the chicken back to its place. And there, now with some cargo as well. So it's a chicken in a box. All right, what are the legends up to? Uh, they're gonna take that second truck and they're gonna link it to the first. Now, folks, we have a convoy. That's right. All right, so Box of the Future making some more deliveries, lining up on the side of the field with the wall and sliding on over. Looks like they're gonna head around with 32 seconds left on the clock. The Lego legends are following that black line. Meanwhile, Box of the Future over there. Oh, nice job with moving the crane off the boat. The legends, looks like they want to do the same thing. Yes, they do, and they do it quickly. Anybody have time to deal with the helicopter? Yes, over in the corner, the legends have done so. With 10 seconds left, it looks like Box of the Future wants to do some parking. Oh yeah, it looks like they're quite happy over there with the end of that happening. With one second left, hugs all around. Karthik, celebrate good times. Give us some scores. All right, well, the scores are, you know, let's hop into DeLorean, 1.2 gigawatts of energy. Go back to the future for the score. We're on the LEGO Legends team, 44.851. 410 points. All right, knock, knock, anybody home. Box to the future, team 458. 360 points. Wow, great stuff happening here. So, all right, Johnny, be good. Tell us what's going on. Charles, we got match number 11 coming up, our second last match of the day. Ready? I am so ready. Max Fit Match is here, and uh, let's rev it up here. All right, well, on the left side, we got team 34291, the Circuit Breakers. And on the right side, I know they've been watching. I've been seeing them in the Twitch chat. Team 44434, the Machine Monkeys. So let's get this match started in three, two, one, Lego. I don't think we're gonna see any uh, robots slipping on bananas, but quick action from the circuit breakers in and out of there very quickly, and they make that cargo hold, they drop that, and they pick up that package. To the other side, oh, look at the size of those back wheels on that robot for the machine monkeys as they head down, and they are passing the bridge and they're heading to the far side. Looks like they're right over to where the train tracks are. Let's see what they can do and what they are planning on doing. Okay, notice a forklift action in the front there, and they twirl around and they are headed towards the sorting area. Okay, our other friends to the other side, switched engine, circuit breakers make that happen. They've gone environmental. And our other friends are, are uh, gaining some momentum and the robot is backing that up and it looks like they're moving forward and they want to hit the airdrop hit some food safety and get that package delivered okay down look at the extension on that and uh, a cargo was delivered to one of the cargo connect areas one of the circles definitely point scored right over there machine monkeys very relaxed very casual the robot picked up as part of their strategy and notice Wow, they have a nice little housing unit they've placed on top. And our other friends to the other side and circuit breakers back in, lining it up, see where they're gonna go. And they have a cargo unit right in front and lining it up and uh, by eye and they're gonna press that button in a minute. What an extension, machine monkeys go forward. Look at the size of that. Wow, these guys are here to play and to get as many points as possible by delivering what it is that they need to deliver and they are very successful at what they do. We are under one minute. Remember, time is money, money is time and also points here for these teams as they want to get as many points as possible here at the provincial championships. Down comes the robot over here for the circuit breakers and they make a deposit for the innovation project in the Cargo Connect area. Oh, nice, did you check that out? The bridge, the panels are both down over there and the truck is very close. Uh, platooning truck is very close to that bridge area. Oh, the crane was uh, maneuvered and the cargo was off that deck. And that was also for the circuit breakers. And they went for a lovely helicopter route and they were able to drop off some packages. Okay, down to that far side, looks like the train tracks were uh, altered and dropped downwards. The machine monkeys making things happen. Okay, circuit breakers are stationary at the time. They're giving each other clap. Time has expired. I saw the red button come on. Okay, Karthik, that was the end of our match. Give us a score and load a score in our directions, please. 
I will unload two scores in your direction as we get the crane to pull the score off the cargo ship. Open the door on the left side, Team 34-291. Circuit Breakers break through with 260 points. And the Machine Monkeys gobbling up those bananas all the way to... 250 points for Team 44-434. Well... This is the point in the broadcast where I get a little sad because it's our it's our last match. It's our last match of the Cargo Connect season. Paul, are you ready for this? I am a little sad too because it's been so fantastic seeing these teams. But my question is, Karl Karthik, will we be able to top those top scores for today? We're gonna see the, from these two teams. Well, you know, let's see if the action is going to pick up to that point. I am sad about it would be the last match, but I'm not sad because, like, the learning never stops, the excitement never stops. And also, we still have award ceremony to come, which is, like, maybe the most exciting thing. So there's lots happening here. But in our last match, it is going to be a good one. On the left side, we got Team 51093 Lightning Tech. And on the right side, Team 23608 Team Bridge. So we're going to get this map started in three, two, one, Lego. All right, last match of the day. And here comes Team Bridge and they are loaded down. They're moving the chicken. They've got the turbine. They've got so many things. And slowly but carefully, it looks like, oh, nice drop off into the Cargo Connect Circle. Here's Lightning Tech scurrying over to the far side. And it looks like they are delivering some cargo into the, so nope, they are delivering some, oh, a box right onto the doorstep. And ding dong, we are there. Nice delivery, okay. And they pick up some cargo from the sorting center at the same time. Talk about multitasking, folks. These teams know what they're doing. All right, Lightning Tech. They were able to do some deliveries and they uh, came back. They left the chicken back in the place where it started. And now it looks like they're heading over to the boat and they're dropping some cargo right onto the deck, sliding the crane over and now a little bit of cargo. Oh, they tried to deliver some cargo to the train, but they didn't meet. But that's okay. They did some track repair, and now it looks like they're picking up some cargo from the sorting center. Lightning Tech getting things organized in their base, getting their robot set to go. Meanwhile, Team Bridge. Oh, there we go. The train is at the station, folks. At the station and set to go. And the Team Bridge also picking up some more cargo. And there's one deck down. There's two decks down. The bridge is complete. Folks, it is safe for people to cross. And both teams back in base. Lightning, nope, sorry, I apologize. Lightning Tech, far side of the field. Over there, interacting with the helicopter. Looks like food delivery is taken care of. Now, what will they do? The bridge is, sorry, the train tracks are repaired. And there goes the train. It has made it to its destination. 40 seconds left. There's so much being done. So much has been done, but there's still so much to do. All right, Team Bridge, all the way at the far side. Oh, nice delivery of the green cargo. And Lightning Tech sauntering over with some cargo in hand. Both teams. All right, let's watch. Lightning Tech. Nice, nice, a nice turn, and the, around they go. It looks like they're heading over to make a delivery right onto the boat. Will they be able to do it? Yes, and down it goes. Nicely done. Three seconds left. Both teams trying to park. Can they do that dance at the and everything parked safely. It looks great. Karthik, these are going to be amazing scores. Let's see what we've got. Oh, Charles, Paul, so much happened right there. Let's take a look at this score. It's going to be a big one. On the left side, Team 51, oh, 93, Lightning Tech. 630 Baby. points. Wow. And on the right side, Team 23, 608, Team Bridge. 635. Wow. Wow. Top score of the day. Bing bong. So, so much to see, so much happening here. What an exciting morning we've had. Thank you so much, Paul and Charles, for commentating on all these matches, bringing the action live into everyone's living rooms or wherever else they're watching this tournament. It was a great 
day of robot action, but we have so much more to come, including a Kahoot challenge, some spotlight presentations, and of course, our award ceremony. And we're going to do all of that in just a moment after this word from one of our sponsors, Magna. folks it's now time for a kahoot challenge just have a little bit of fun you know and hey you know it is black history month so let's do a kahoot themed on some of the great inventors in black history so let's take a look and hey you're wondering are we just doing this kahoot for fun or are there going to be like prizes involved of course there's going to be prizes first place is going to get a first canada fanny pack second place a first canada moleskin notebook and third place a first canada toque so Let's take a look at our Kahoot. All right, everyone, to join in, go to www.kahoot.it, punch in your code 5908128, and you can play along with us. Remember, there are prizes on the line, folks, so you're definitely going to want to get into the game. Oh, we got two cheetahs, an Amazon cheetah and a purple cheetah. Diligent, Diligent Macaw has showed up. Come on, folks, get on in. Great prizes. That first Canada fanny pack can be really useful to store things that you need, you know, when you're at events or you're at school. And the Moleskin Notebook for recording anything you're thinking about when it comes to robots, get your thoughts in there or anything else. And the first Canada too, oh, really keeps us warm at this time of year. All right, we got some players in the game. Give it a few more seconds as they keep coming in. Oh, Smart Lobster. Smart Lobster knows how to avoid the pot. That's what I'm saying right there. Elated Egret, Super Dolphin. Okay, I think we got enough players. Let's get this thing started. Breaking Barriers, the history of black inventors. First is a robotics community that prepares young people for the future and is committed to expanding opportunities for stu all students to participate and thrive in FIRST programs. This Kahoot was created in celebration of Black History Month and can be used throughout the academic year to teach students about the history and challenges overcome by Black innovators. Reflection. So why do we celebrate Black History Month? Watch this 40-second video clip about the invention process in the Especially 1800s. During enslavement, enslaved individuals were not allowed to receive patents or assign them to others. They were not allowed to enter into contracts with the government because they were not considered citizens, let alone human. Because of this, many black inventors during slavery and after were ignored and their inventions credited to others. This American legacy of disparaging and disrespecting the agency of black inventors unfortunately led some to even deny their blackness in fear that their invention would decline in commercial All right, let's take a look at our first question. What process to secure a license to an invention was prohibited for black persons during the time of slavery in America? Process, invention, patent, creator. You know, we're gonna be playing a few videos before these questions today. You really wanna pay attention because it might help you get your answers. coming in. I think we can take a look at our our final answer right here. The correct answer is patent, which 22 of you got, more than half of you got. Great job, everyone in the audience. A patent is a license to an invention, which and, and Black uh, people in America could not get them at that time, which was uh, really prevented them from having any sort of agency over their invention and cost them a lot of uh, money. So, Let's take a look at our results here. The 
Amazon cheetah and smart lobster in first place, but it's very, very close right there. It's just about how fast you can get your answers in. So now let's take a look at a video to prep us for our next question. General public's ignorance concerning black inventors. He was an African-American man who was a second assistant examiner at the patent office in the 1800s. He claimed that the white people in charge would keep black inventors hidden by identifying them as having white or non-black ancestors. Fortunately for us, Granville Woods fell through the cracks. He was so exceptional that it was hard to ignore. Granville put to use his knowledge of electronics, chemistry, and physics to design several of the era's great inventions. The attention he drew, of course, was not without controversy, however. Due to the extent of racism and denial of black intellect, the Cosmopolitan magazine reported that Wood's maternal grandfather was a Malay Indian and that his other grandparents were Australian Aborigines. Anything to deny his Africa. Okay, now let's take a look at our next question. Multi-select, folks. What knowledge did Granville Woods use to create some of the greatest inventions of the 19th century? It's a multi-select, so it could be one of them, two, three, maybe even all four. Chemistry, cooking, physics, or electronics. Chemistry, cooking, physics, or electronics. Answers coming in, only about 10 seconds left here, folks. And the correct answers are chemistry, physics, and electronics. Congratulations to everyone who got all three of them. You're going to get 1,000 points. Well, up to 1,000 points for each of them. Let's take a look at what that does to our standings. Now into first place, the social quail. Caca, caca, smart lobster followed by super dolphin. Now our next informative video. Greenville was granted his first patent for a steam boiler furnace. Woods created devices that involved the conversion of electricity into useful and economic functions. He created an incubator that was described as the forerunner of present machines capable of hatching 50,000 eggs at a time. He also patented many transmission devices from telephones to telegraphs. Greenville contributed to the area of circuit designs and the generation of electricity. His knowledge of chemistry allowed him to invent the galvanic battery, a battery that produced electricity through chemical reactions. During his lifetime, he patented about 50 inventions and devices, many of them related to electric railways, which gave him the most recognition and praise. He no doubt revolutionized the railroad and electric railway industries with his fantastic work. His development of the so-called third rail used in electric railways increased the safety of the nation's entire city. Okay, let's take a look at our question then. How many patents did Granville achieve in his time? Let me tell you, Granville would maybe one of the greatest inventors of all time. Just he's a true renaissance man with the breath. You know, we're talking chicken incubators, also um, circuit boards, electricity, and then the third rail on railways, like chicken incubators, electric railways. Like that is a wide spread right there. Just, uh, you know, renaissance man, there's no other way to put it. All right, let's take a look. The correct answer is 50, which 33 of you got. 50 patents in Granville's lifetime. So, our standings. Social Quail still up there, followed by Smart Lobster and Super Dolphin. Now, to our next question. Well, next video before our question. Whoa, it's just straight to a question. What was the most notable invention for which Granville was known? Electric railways, the subway, airplanes, or motor vehicles? Maybe a hint in the photo. Maybe. Okay, I think we can take a look at our correct answer. 
It is the electric railways, and all 40 of you got that one correct. Thank you for paying attention, folks. And now our standings. Stays the same. Social Quail, Smart Lobster, and Super Dolphin. All right, next we go. The device was designed for the purpose of averting accidents by keeping each train informed of the whereabouts of the one immediately ahead or following it in communicating with the stations from moving trains and in promoting general social and commercial intercourse. Before Granville's invention, trains apparently had little to no assistance in locating the whereabouts of other trains, so accidents would happen frequently. This invention certainly got attention, and once he made his move to market the product through his company, he was challenged in two court cases by Thomas Edison, who claimed rights to the induction telegraph. In both court cases, Grainville beat Thomas Edison and was recognized by the U.S. Patent Office as the inventor. This event can be seen as a blessing and a curse, because although he received high praise and generated wealth, he was not able to compete economically in the long run. The duality of 19th century racism and legitimate corporate competition funded by centuries of slave money rendered Grainville and other black inventors unable to keep up. And so, he found it better to sell his inventions to larger white-owned corporations. White society possessing the ability to control the inventions created by black men also possessed the power to control the potential of the inventors themselves. Woods and other black inventors were allowed to contribute to society as inventors, but not as businessmen. By minimizing the black inventors' participation in the American corporate system, white society was able to control the growth of the black companies concerned with technology. Despite being a victim of his time, Granville Woods is an excellent testament to black intellect, and his name deserves to be remembered. Okay, and now our next question. What problem did Granville's induction telegraph system help solve? Forecasting the weather? Reducing train accidents? Curing diseases? Inventing the computer? answer is th reducing train accidents again you're all been paying attention this is great to see all right let's move on see what this kahoot brings to us next our scoreboard social quail smart lobster super dolphin all holding serve right now true or false thomas edison tried but failed to take ownership of the rights to the telegraph induction system from granville true or false I think we can skip ahead here. I think most people got their answers in. Correct answer is true. True. Thomas Edison did try to, but failed. Uh, he didn't win the lawsuit. All right. So now let's see where we're at with our standings. Oh, no. Social Quail went down. Smart Lobster in first place, followed by Super Dolphin and Flying Llama. Llama. Okay, next up. Inventor Spotlight. Her work immortalized in the hit movie Hidden Figures. Katherine Johnson was an American mathematician whose calculations of orbital mechanics as a NASA employee were critical to the success of the first and subsequent U.S. crewed space flights. What major milestone in space science did Katherine Johnson impact? The moon landing, America's first human space flight, the first rocket flight, or America's trip to Mars? All 
All right, there's our answer. The correct answer is the first human space flight. That was a tough one. That really, you know, only 15 people got that one correct. So now let's see what that does to our final standees. Well, before we do that, reflect in discussion. So what is one new thought or takeaway you've, you've learned from this activity? And what could you do to embody inclusivity? I think there were some great lessons here about some great inventors and the struggles they went through uh, because of their race. And I think it's important to realize that there are obstacles that have been faced in the past and that people still face today. And so it's important to think about those things. But I hope everyone can reflect upon this and, you know, go along on their journey to uh, acquiring more knowledge and perspective and empathy. So our final standings, our podium. If you're in the top three, take a screenshot to prove it. Smart Lobster in third place. Social Quail in second place. And first place, Flying Llama. Hey, if you are one of these top three, take a screenshot, send it to communications at firstwalkscanada.org to claim your prize. Thanks to everyone for playing along. You know, those were some pretty impressive matches we saw earlier, but not only have teams designed, built, and programmed robots like the ones you just saw to complete as many missions as possible, they've also developed solutions to real-world problems related to this year's Cargo Connect Challenge theme. And we're going to be taking a look at those in just one moment, but I think, you know, to come up with real solutions, there's got to be real engineering involved. And, you know, let's take a look at how one of our partners is teaching real-world electronics engineering, Durham College. All right, we're back. And now to take a look at our first spotlight presentation, it's from Team 458, Box to the Future. What's new in the world today? Oh my goodness gracious, Omicron is spreading lightning fast. We need to change our strategy quickly. Needs for devices among Canadians with disabilities, Americans risking their health to get their medications. Even if I could get there, I would never go into a pharmacy during these circumstances. Ding dong. Oh, that must be my prescription. Coming. Oh my gosh, the delivery truck is gone along with my meds. What am I going to do now? Uh, Ma, what happened? I heard the doorbell ring. Biff didn't come along and give me a problem, did he? Oh no, Marty, nothing like that. It's a hundred times worse. I didn't make it to the door in time to get my essential prescription, and now it's gone. Don't worry, Ma. Nobody called me chicken. I'll go to the pharmacy for you. Oh, goody. Back to my newspaper. I don't know what the other seniors would do if they didn't have people to help them like Marty. According to the CDC, 40% of U.S. adults aren't getting the medical attention they need because of fear of COVID-19. Also, according to the STAR, just 37% of seniors drive. Less than 8% rely on public transportation and only 5% walk. 30 minutes waiting in line to get here and 30 minutes stuck in traffic? Where's my flying DeLorean when I need it? Great, Scott, Marty, is that you? Whoa, this is heavy. Doc, this whole process of getting medicine when you need it is for the birds. The lines are long and the sick people can't always drive themselves around. There must be a better way. Maybe there is a better way. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Doc, even if there was a better way, the roads are all jammed up with holiday traffic. Roads? Where are we going? We don't need roads. And off we go to hopefully a better future where medicine comes to you safely and securely. Uh, Doc, are you sure you set the coordinates right in the flux capacitor? Oh, oh no. no. We're, We're going, going back, back in time, time again. again. Uh, Doc, I think you put the DeLorean in reverse again. again. <laughs> what have we here? Some jelly wedges, some silver treasure. 
Get ready to walk the plague front gate. Why are we going to take you to the future where there's blue drops off of people's front porches every day? Every house must do the house, so break and sweat. Shiver me timber. I hide. You yeah. need deep. I'll yeah. horse muggle, and I'll loot to me heart's content. A pirate's dream. Let's go. Three time travelers were off. But what the pirate didn't know is that Marty and Doc had no intention of returning to the present as they knew it. No, they were too smart for that. They set the flux capacitor slightly further into the future, hoping its future reality would be a much less pirate-friendly environment. So tell me, lad, when do I collect me loot? Soon. Let's just wait over here until the next delivery attempt. You will see. It's that easy to leave the goods right on the ground. I will sink me a salty dog easier than I thought. Whoa! Delivery of medication is so easy now. I simply need to scan the barcode like so. Now, the FedEx will match the prescription barcode. If the barcode matches, the FedEx will take my prescription and secure it carefully after determining the temperature it should be stored at, while providing me with a digital signature in the process. Couldn't be easier, simply protecting myself from COVID-19 in a hands-free, safe way. Army heart to you, rapscallion. You told me pirating would be easy around here. Not so much with this FedRx. Time to abandon ship before I'm marooned in this place. Phew! Saved by this box from the future, and woohoo! No more trips to the pharmacy or missed delivery attempts. Mamas love this. You bet I love the FedEx, dear. Now my medication is exactly where I expect it to be. And retrieving it is as easy as scanning my fingerprint. Mom, I'm so glad you're safe. Even with this pandemic, I thought there were no guarantees for our futures. I was truly scared when I had COVID to give it to anyone, even the poor delivery drivers giving me my essential goods. Yeah, for a while, it looked rough. There was a COVID pill, but even going out to get that was a scary thought. Now this, along with all of my other medication, safely comes to me daily. Doc, did you hear that? The future is full of great inventions like the FedRx. You know what I always say, the future is whatever you make it. And it looks like Team 458 Fox of the Future has made it a great one. Well, that's the power of love right there. Ah, it was my favorite presentation I may have ever seen. That was absolutely fabulous. Thank you, Fox to the Future. And now let's take a look at our next spotlight presentation from Team 5831 Control Z. Welcome to FLL National News at 6. And tonight, our top story is landfill. Have you ever received a package that contains mostly bubble wrap or styrofoam filler? The plastics in our world are ending up as landfill because only 9% of plastics get recycled, which means 91% ends up as pollution, harming our environment. The number of packages shipped has increased dramatically over the past two decades. During the pandemic, volume growth of packaging surged by an average of over 20%. Clearly, there is a growing need for sustainable packaging. Protective packaging is an $8 billion global industry. Currently, void fillers such as bubble wrap and styrofoam peanuts are made of plastics. Most of them don't get recycled. We need a sustainable, secure solution because current void fillers are not eco-friendly. Uh, and now we have breaking news. We have a group of fabulous young entrepreneurs live with us. Hi, we are team 5831 Control Z Bayview Glen from Toronto. Here is our solution. Introducing the, the Z Box. Z -box. The Z-Box is an integrated container board box liner that protects products of various sizes and shapes for shipping, while serving as an environmentally friendly alternative to traditional polystyrene and resin void fillers. The inner curtain has adjustable interlocking pre-cut arms to safely encase the product during transport. The item is placed securely in the Z-Box, then the locking arms of the inner container are secured to prevent any shifting within the box. The Z-Box is superior to current void fillers because it is easy to use, effective, and petroleum free. These are some of the existing products that we looked at for inspiration. 
in the end, we created the Z-Box. We talked to three leading experts in the packaging industry to help us with our project. James Dunn, CEO of Pack Global, found the Z-Box to be unique and suggested that we use thinner materials and create different sized Z-Boxes to accommodate different sized products. He also thought that the Z-Box will improve the unboxing experience for the customer. Alan Kirkpatrick of the Canadian Corrugated and Container Board Association taught us that 98% of corrugated boxes are recycled back into more corrugated boxes. He was impressed with our design. Robert Suka of Atlantic Packaging, one of Canada's largest container board manufacturers, said that the Z-Box is a very good concept and that shippers would appreciate its cost efficiency. We created five versions of our prototype to perfect the interlocking arms. We went from an initial prototype with four arms to our final prototype with 16. Each arm has multiple notches to tailor the Z-Box to the shape and size of the product. After the Z-Box has been used, it can be fully recycled without the need to separate the components into different waste streams since it is completely made of container board. Z-Box can be a viable business. After two years of startup losses, we conservatively estimate that the Z-Box will be profitable by a third year. The first two years involve some initial fixed costs, which will be recovered in later years. By year eight, $3.8 million of cumulative net income would be generated. Z-Box production can be done using existing equipment and is well suited for Control Z to outsource to car to manufacturers. This is, this is the expected growth of Z-Box sales and units. A typical truckload is about 10,000 cartons. So in year one, we would sell just 30 truckloads of Z-Box. However, by year eight, we conservatively expect to sell about, about 380 truckloads. We plan to create three sizes of Z-Boxes to accommodate different sizes of products. Mr. Downham of Pack Global recommended that we make the Z-Box fun to open and that we gamify our product. Thank you very much, Control Z. That was a fascinating presentation. Great. Using corrugated container board to protect products is better for the environment than using plastic and oil-based void pillars. The Z-Box is your secure, versatile, integrated, sustainable, and frustration-free packaging solution. We are not owners of this world. We are merely its stewards for future generations. We need to make sure that our packaging does not harm the planet. All right, so those, thank you teams. Thank you, uh, Control-Z, and thank you, Box to the Future. Those were some pretty amazing innovations, and only two of the many ideas that teams came up with this season. Uh, you know, not only were their ideas innovative, but they're, so were their robot designs and game strategies. And, you know, we saw some great matches today. We saw some phenomenal scores, and now it's time to take a look at our overall rankings from the robot game. Just a reminder, folks, there was one change in a score. The Tefatal score was 535, not 495, and that's reflected here in the standings. Teams were ranked on their best scores. You can see all those standings right there, folks. Uh, before we get to our awards ceremony, we would like to tell you about the other two divisions of the First Lego League program. There's First Lego League Discover for youth ages 4 to 6, you know, little ones, and First Lego League Explore for youth ages 6 to 10. Teams participating in these programs have also had a great season this year. And here to tell us more about this program and their season is Program Manager from First Canada, Christine Bibbing. Thanks, Carson. It certainly has been an exciting season for everyone involved in the three divisions of First Lego League. And I know we're looking forward to next season and registration, which opens in May. Let's take a sneak peek at what sort of things First Lego League Discover, First Lego League Explore, and First Lego League Challenge teams will be learning about next season as we watch this special video. I'm really looking forward to learning more when the challenge details are released in August and to better understand what those video hints are all about. As you know, First Lego League includes more than just First Lego League Challenge. There's a division for four to six-year-olds called First Lego League Discover. 
and a division for six to 10 year olds called First Lego League Explore. First Lego League Discover teams have been busy all season long designing and building various methods of moving cargo from one place to another using Lego Duplo elements. I've been super impressed to see that students have not only built some fun and creative ways to transport cargo, but they've learned a lot about first core values as well. First Lego League Explore teams have been using their Lego Education We Do 2.0 and Spike Essential Kits to design, build, and program their Lego models to create new and fun ways to deliver cargo around their mat. Throughout the year, teams have attended festivals to share their ideas and tell others about their journey of learning and how they've used the engineering process. All of the first Lego League divisions offer amazing opportunities to students. And I really want to encourage you to get others involved by spreading first in your community. There's still time to recruit for first Lego League Discover and first Lego League Explore teams for the Cargo Connect season. You can find all the details you need to help you start new teams on the First Canada website, including information on curriculum connections, how teams can be run in a classroom, costs, and grants. Just think about how wonderful it would be for your younger siblings and friends to get involved and how amazing it would be to welcome new members to your team next year that have already participated in a first Lego League program and already know about core values, programming, and teamwork. If you do start a new team, be sure to let me know so I can give you a shout out on social media. Back to you, Karthik. Thank you, Christine. And now folks, welcome to the Ontario East Provincial Championship Closing and Awards Ceremony. What a terrific event this has been, not just our showcase, but everything the teams have done from going to their judging sessions and recording their matches, meeting with the referees to discuss the matches. It's just been a great week of action. And none of this could be possible. You know, we're so fortunate without the major sponsors we have from government and industry who see the value in this program and have demonstrated their support with financial gifts. The provincial government has backed our program with funds once again this year so that we've been able to financially support the growth of this great program through funding for new teams and events, including this one. It's fantastic to see major companies such as Magna, Hatch, OPG, Amazon Future Engineer, and so many more supporting our mission. You know, before we get to the team awards, we'd like to again recognize the contributions of the judges, referees, and many other volunteers who helped make this event possible. So thank you, volunteers. And now for our awards. Many teams come to this event with truly innovative solutions that can help solve real world problems and greatly benefit society. We saw a couple of those earlier during the spotlight presentations. To recognize and promote and help teams further develop these innovative solutions, First Canada will be hosting an event in early March called the Ontario Innovation Celebration to help select the three teams that will be invited to apply for an opportunity to showcase their innovations at the Global Innovation Awards competition in June. So let's take a look at some of the amazing innovations from previous seasons to inspire our future competitors. First is a big, big believer in innovation. Our goal is to keep the human race safe from pathogens. We are a nonprofit bringing the food to the people. We identified the problem of fibromyalgia. Pathways connecting sensory playgrounds. It creates the inability to walk. We are building for the next generation. For their innovative solutions, six teams have been selected to advance to the Ontario Innovation Celebration and will receive a digital certificate to recognize this accomplishment. In no particular order, our six teams advancing are Team 51093 Lightning Tech, Team 5831 Control Z, Z, Team 458 Box to the Future, 
Team 52364, Zed Cats. Team 52356, Phantom. And Team 44851, the Lego Legends. First Lego League Challenge program would not exist without its volunteers. This award honors an extraordinary volunteer whose dedication to the First Lego League Challenge program has had a positive impact on a team's experience. The winner is Andrew Hansraj. <laughs> mentors inspire their teams to do their best both as individuals and together and without them there would be no first lego league challenge this award goes to the coach or mentor whose leadership and guidance is clearly evident and best exemplifies the first core values and here's what the judges had to say about this coach this coach inspires their team to succeed in all they do Students of this new team highlight how much fun this coach was and how much they value all the work she has done for this team. She invests her time to help students understand what it means to be an engineer and help students strive to figure out things on their own. Congratulations to Zuena Sood from Team 52364. Congratulations not only to the winning coach, but to all the fantastic coaches who were nominated by their teams. Coaches, if you're interested in recognizing and rewarding some of your students, please consider this exciting new opportunity. Through the generosity of the Mark and Rona Brenner Fund, First Canada is proud to encourage and reward young STEM First Nations and Black youth enthusiasts as nominated by their teacher mentor. This prize will encourage successful First Lego League Challenged Age members, ages 9 to 14, to continue with their STEM interests and progress into the First Tech Challenge and First Robotics Competition programs run by First Canada. Winning students will receive a unique First Canada orange hoodie with a custom logo, as seen on the screen. Additionally, $1,000 will be made available to students to be used as follows. Uh, you could $500 for, towards a first team registration in FLL, FTC, or FTC, or FRC, and $500 to spend on a personal First Lego League or First Tech Challenge starter kit, or $1,000 towards registrations and or a kit for a first team. So these are really big prizes. In addition to the funding, individualized mentoring opportunities will be available to the selected recipients. So the deadline to apply is February 28th, which is coming up very, very soon. Apply, apply, apply. More details can be found on the First Canada website, and you can go to the link that you see right there on your screen. Now, for our first team award, the Breakthrough Award. This award celebrates a team that made significant progress in their confidence and capability in both the robot game and innovation project and are a shining example of excellent core values. They demonstrate that they understand that what they discover is more important than what they win. Here's what the judges had to say about this team. This team is a rookie team. They are full of energy and very enthusiastic. Judges could feel their energies through their screens. They use technologies to keep them connected and on track. The Breakthrough Award goes to team number 52356, Phantom. <laughs> Engineering Excellence Award. This award celebrates a team with an efficiently designed robot, an innovative project solution that effectively addresses the season challenge, and great core values in all they do. The judges had to say this about this winning team. This forced them to embrace the potential impact they could have on the lives of others, and the robot might have veered, but it always got back on target. The Engineering Excellence Award goes to team number 38463, Technado. Our Rising All-Star Award. This award celebrates a team that the judges notice and from whom they expect great things in the future. This team for this award is very knowledgeable and always looking towards 21st century solutions. 
they commanded very technical solutions and designed a metabot. The Rising All-Star Award goes to Team 23608 Team Bridge. <laughs> Motivate Award. This award celebrates a team that embraces the culture of First Leg League through team building, team spirit, and displayed enthusiasm. This team's skit was excellent. Their team spirit, positive attitudes, and enthusiasm during their presentations shine through. Very impressive kindness towards one another as a team. The Motivate Award goes to team number 54660 UTS Baguettes. And it's now time to present the core awards. The Innovation Project Award. This award celebrates a team that utilizes diverse resources for their innovation project to help them gain a comprehensive understanding of their problem, have a creative, well-researched, and effectively communicate their findings to the judges and the committee. Uh, well-researched solution, that is, folks. This team's projects really rock the rails with their research. They impress the judges, and we have to say they're really the cat's meow. Oh, that wasn't a good meow. Meow. Uh, early in the morning. Cats still wake it up. Congratulations to team number 52364, Zedcats. All right. The Robot Design Award. This award celebrates a team that uses outstanding programming principles and solid engineering practices to develop a robot that is mechanically sound, durable, efficient, and highly capable of performing challenge missions. This team impressed us with their focus on consistency and accuracy. Their ability to work together remotely supercharged them and they were on fire. The Robot Design Award goes to team number 12513 T-Bots. Robot Performance Award. This award celebrates a team that scores the most points during the robot game. Teams have a chance to compete in at least three two and a half minute matches and their highest score counts. The Robot Performance Award goes to team number 23608, Team Bridge, with a high score that you saw of 635 points. Values Award. This award celebrates a team that displays extraordinary enthusiasm and spirit and knows that they can accomplish more together than they could as individuals and shows one another and the other team's respect at all times. This team, the, the team for this award is big on delivering combos. They showed many stages of their thorough investigations from their vantage point in the Batcave. Congratulations to team number 44851 Lego Legends. The Champions Award, the highest honor in First Lego League Challenge. This award celebrates a team that embodies First Lego League Challenge, the First Lego League Challenge experience by fully embracing our core values while achieving excellence and in innovation in robot performance, robot design, and the innovation project. We'll be recognizing three teams here. Here's what the judges had to say about our third place champions award team. This team took their thinking out of the box and into the future, impressing the judges with their acting, singing, and their robot had more than 10 great things. Congratulations to our third place champions award team, team number 458, Box to the Future. Our second place champions award team. This team shocked the judges with their innovation and clever designs. The robot really led the pack and saw success both on the field and in the judging room. They may have been a small team, but they were mighty in this competition. Congratulations to our second place team, 51093 Lightning Tech. And now here's what the judges have to say about our first place champions award winner. From a cheer to the end, from, sorry, from a cheer to the end, 
I'm going to get this right one time, from a cheer to end the session to point out all the stops on their robot design and a formal endorsement from their experts, this team did a phenomenal job in all categories. The Champions Award goes to team number 5831, Control-Z, Bayview Glenn. teams will have an opportunity to attend one of the two international competitions, the World Festival or the Western Edge Invitational, or to compete in the second annual Canada Cup, along with the following three teams. Team 44-851 LEGO Legends, 52-356 Phantom, and 38-463 Technados. Congratulations to all our teams who competed here and a special shout out to our advancing teams that we just saw. This concludes the closing award ceremony for the Ontario East Provincial Championship and the Cargo Connect season here in Ontario. So everyone, thank you for competing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this event. Thank you to our volunteers, our organizers, our staff, Anna Kapin for putting on this amazing event, this amazing season. Good luck, everyone. We look forward to maybe seeing you at the Canada Cup or a future event or seeing you next season. Until then, folks, stay safe, have fun, enjoy, and we will see you soon. Bye, everyone.